Hello. Hello. Yeah, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah. Nice to meet <laughs> you. Yeah. Cheers for uh cheers for getting in touch. Oh no, that's all right. No, it was great for um it was a great find. It's a good trip down memory lane. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, I was just looking at back at your messages and some of the videos, like some of the bands you work with, absolutely great. Just yeah, wait for well, Matt to join me for the beginning. Been on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even like, uh, like you say, like Ryan's old band from Yada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like that. It's interesting. But we did quite a lot of work for, um, like, uh, print work as well, like record sleeves. Oh, really? So okay. Matt, who's looks like he's trying to connect. Um, we met at uni and I was doing animation and he was doing graphic design. Uh, okay. So we, when we first started out, I mean, I, I could wait for Matt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was kind of it. I, I sort of started doing the animation stuff. He was doing record sleeves and then we started working together, but we did, um, um, Art Brutes artwork for their album and singles. Okay, cool. And I think we did the uh, Foles debut single, actually. Right. Which was a good one for the CV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So which uh, which videos did you do for Art Brute? Uh, we didn't do any videos, but we did, uh, okay, right. did the um, album artwork. Uh, okay. So, uh, right, right, yeah. Let's have a look at it now, actually. It's all the like, overlaid faces. Uh, okay, cool, yeah. Because, I mean, Eddie Argos, he seems quite into the art side of things. Was, all, was it kind of collaboration type thing? Um, you probably have to talk, talk more to Matt about that. I, I was, I think that was more of his baby when we were working together. Ah, uh, fair enough. Hello. He's there. Oh, Mama, my right? God. Good, thank you. That was um, that was painful. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Sorry. I've been working in Microsoft Teams all day, so I just got a bit confused with Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Are uh, you down south as well? Um, uh, London is that south? <laughs> I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I'm in Walthamstow. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. How much have I missed? What? What? What's? What nothing. Doing? Nothing. We've just been uh, shooting the breeze. Shooting <laughs> the breeze. How are you, mate? All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. All right. It's been a long week, but um, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. yeah. Nice one. Uh, I mean, Ed was saying you met at uni. So which uni was that? Uh, Ravensbourne College of Design and Communication. Um, Ravensbourne. I don't even know where that is. Rest in, rest in peace. Uh, yeah, yeah. No one, no one's heard of it. It was tiny. Um, it's about a thousand people there, I think. Um, all in. So, uh, was it, it in London? In, it was in Bromley. Just uh, Bromley out, okay. outside. Yeah, yeah. We were. Um, I think Ed. We were. If I remember rightly, we were. Um, we we met in the canteen, and we were both looking for a, a house to live in. And you were about to go and look at something, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I need a room." Um, and that's where it began. It was an awesome house, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> big, big university house, like the like like the house out of the young ones. No, it was like <laughs> um, it was like the house from um, Fresh Meat. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, a bit of a mix of characters. Yeah, big mix. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the stories here that we probably were here, but yeah, no. yeah. I mean, it's not it's completely irrelevant for today. Um, but yeah, fair enough. Give you some uh, inspiration. Yeah, you work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. Very much so. Um, then... Yeah, that was it. We met at uni. Matt was doing graphics. I was doing animation. Um, and then. Uh, Hope of the States came knocking. Right. Yeah. So how does that happen? Yeah. So I am um, all with half of them because they're all from Chichester. Oh, most of them were from Chichester on the South Coast. Um, so I went to school with Sam and Jimmy and Ant and stuff. Um, and Sam was in touch about, uh, he, he had this band that, with, with 
some of the original members, which were a bit different from the ones everyone knows. Um, and they were recording in Torag Studios in in um, uh, in Hackney. Where are they? Homerton. Um, and he wanted me to just come along and take some pictures because I had a camera. Um, and he was really keen on, if I remember rightly, he was really keen on documenting everything from the start. So he wanted like, you know, like photos of everything, you know, video. We were very early doing video stuff, like crappy little mini DVs and all the rest of it. And because I was in London at uni, well, just outside, he was like, yeah, come along, take some pictures. Um, might be fun. So I did. Um, I think I spent a day there, Ed, and then I phoned you up. Is that right? Because um, mm. the White Stripes had just finished doing an album and we were both really into the White, White Stripes at the time. Um, I think it's like the only, or was at the time, the only like analog studio or fully analog studio in London. So the White Stripes came over and did, was it Elephant? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was listening to that album recently, yeah. Yeah, um, and I think I... You played some of the tracks down the phone to me. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Of um, elephant. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> probably co- probably completely illegal. Like yeah. unreleased, unmixed. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's Liam who owns Toe Rag, isn't it? Is that his name? I was used oh, to bump probably. into him at gigs. Ah. Because uh, Anthony was doing some production work there, I was like assisting or something. I think that's how they got the time. Anyway, um, I I persuaded Ed to come down because you had a camera, didn't you? You had a video camera. Okay, so right. so we, we said, oh, we'll just do some video as well um yeah uh i can't remember how long we were there for though that like a week maybe a couple of days wasn't it um took some pictures took some video and they were doing i think anthony was doing like some sort of experimental film stuff for their like on stage shows um and i think we managed to persuade him I will do that for you. We know what we're doing. Well, I, I, I had no idea. I, I'd have some idea. Um, yeah, so we persuaded him to take over like the projections and stuff. And I think, if I remember rightly, we were on the waiting for the train on the way back from Homerton, um, and we decided, oh, let's just let's just start a little business out of this. This this will be fun. This will be awesome. Um, we've got one guaranteed client. Um, take some pictures of Hope and States. Do a couple of like demo like sleeve artwork stuff um and we'll do their projections and we'll you know help them with their live shows and stuff and and ed you already had the name didn't you you'd already had your heart set on type two error um god knows i don't know i don't remember (laughs) because you you were like oh yeah i've got a name like i've always wanted to call it type two error because at the time that was a like a memory failure or something wasn't it like an error code you got on on max we get them all the time at uni and it used to just piss us off and it's like yeah let's just call ourselves that be funny so um yeah that's that's that that's the that's the genesis um yeah yeah. and then and then what we were doing about making it up they got some interest and a manager who um was coincidentally ryan's first manager from komikino and yard act oh yeah i listened to that one the other week yeah um (laughs) So he had some good, some good mentions of Howard on there, and he yeah. and he. So he was booking the band uh, for tours, and the band wanted to do visuals. So we had to make loads of live visuals for them. Uh, they got into a bit of a bidding war, or some labels got into a bit of a bidding war for them. Yeah, because they ended up being quite big, didn't they? Yeah, 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 pretty big. Yeah, I think it was yeah. Universal and Sony, wasn't it? That were both fighting over them. Yeah. Um, and Howard's thing, if I remember, he was um, he was all about don't go to a a cool small label like Rough Trade or Domino or something like that. Just go to a massive one because you just get bigger <laughs> budgets, you get more attention. And it was a very, it, it, at the time it was all a bit. Oh, that's not very cool, is it? It's not very sort of credible, but he just had a for all his crazy uh i'm not going to use the word failings because they weren't failings at all but for all his just insane craziness he had a proper good like business head on him i think i think he was quite smart in just playing the two labels off each other and making sure that they just got as much money out of them as possible and, and making sure that they were signed to 
the most senior AR A and R person they could get their hands on because you know um if you're not signed to the most senior person you're just going to get forgotten about um so yeah it was um sony music in the end uh so we ended up doing quite a lot of work with various other bands um and artists from sony um which was cool yeah, yeah. so I did, I, I did their first video as my uh, major project at uni uh, okay what did you get for it I got uh, first, didn't I got, you? I got first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got yeah. a two one. I, I did the sleeve artwork. I got a two one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um yeah. and that was the yeah. that, that, that got banned from MTV, my the video. Okay. Oh well, because of the train crash, wasn't it? Uh no, it was it was in the enemy. It said it'd been banned for over um I don't know war imagery. I think the 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 second Iraq war, I guess, had just broken out. Is that? That's right. Actually, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, so, uh, so got it was like out. quite sort of post apocalyptic, wasn't it? Mm. Okay, um, it's interesting because I remember. Well, when I was talking to Steve from Hot Hot Heat, he said that bandages got taken off the radio for similar reasons. Yeah, yeah, it was mad. Yeah, it does, it does seem quite mad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in terms of music, then were you bang into this this type of music, or was it just where the work was at the time? I think it was a bit of both, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I know, ge- genuinely really liked Hope of the States. It wasn't because they were friends. Um, I thought they were doing really interesting stuff. Um, and not that I know anything about music. Uh, obviously, we worked with some bands that you know less less interested in like in terms of musically but but i think um yeah absolutely into that uh it was just it was just really i'd have to remember like we were in our early 20s we were fresh out of college like Ted said he did we did the first music video for his final project i did the uh black dollar bills like sleeve artwork packaging stuff for my uh for my major project um we hadn't graduated uh, you know, and we're, we're already doing it. And then their second music video, one with an actual budget on Sony, we shot that the day that we should have been. Um, uh, what's what, what's it called when you get your certificate? Gradu- Graduate. Graduation. graduation. Yeah, it was our graduation day, but we were shooting an actual music video with an actual budget and an actual crew. So yeah, you have to remember that. Yeah, we were just kids, and we were into indie music, and it yeah, and all of a sudden we were just like dropped into these actual music videos for these actual bands yes yeah, yeah it was great, it was great. <laughs> it was great but it was also <laughs> terrifying do you remember turning up to the to the enemy's friends um shoot we because we, yeah. we were we were still living together at the time we got a taxi in there we'd just drive up there it's like a fucking crew of, sort of 30 or 40 people or something yeah all waiting for the co-directors to turn up so they you know they could get started well, we i had, studied we... graphic design i didn't have a single clue what i was doing yeah we didn't have any idea about budgets for music videos and um the sort of label said right well, it was sort of well you're gonna do it so you just write you just come up with an idea for what you want to do and then uh, we'll see how you go and they didn't give <laughs> us any uh, any steer on what is possible and we came up with this idea and they they um they budgeted it out and it was like Nearly two hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> oh what yeah, I had it? like no. We had, had to it? come up with a new one. Funnily oh, enough, okay, right. Ten <laughs> percent of the budget. Yeah, it was. Um, it was like yeah, it was a great idea. It was just like this kind of. But they we didn't, it didn't get over the line. No. Well, who is no. this for? Hope of the stairs. Yeah, that was like a, yeah, that was the it first was... one. Okay, it was for right. enemy's friends, wasn't it? It was that first one, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what you get if you just let two people just come up with whatever idea they they want without any budget restrictions or anything. Um, so yeah, we yeah that in that and we ended up shooting in that um, sort of like dilapidated old manor house, wasn't it? I can't remember where it was, but it was this wonderful location with various rooms. You couldn't go onto the first floor because it wasn't safe various rooms like had missing floors and stuff and missing walls and 
but the bits that we were allowed in just looked like yeah again like some sort of post-apocalyptic mental institute it was um mm. it was a great location uh yes yeah, it was a fun day yeah. but it was terrifying being thrown in at the deep end yeah 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 yeah, that's mine. yeah. <laughs> make yeah. It, you make it yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm not sure we ever made it either it's um like 10 years faking. but that yeah that was a good then we we were in then with um you know music videos and commissioners yeah and, and then then we did uh fiery furnaces um tropical iceland that was good to get him a rough trade that was rough trade wasn't it yeah so is, yeah. is it labels that you're getting in with really is that the um, type of thing? yeah well the labels were well, I don't know how much you know what happens with the music video. Not not much really at all, yeah. Well, the label and the band decide what single they're going to release. Uh, they hire, uh, well, they either have some, a video commissioner on the staff at the record label, or they hire an independent video commissioner who decides on a brief, which they then send out to directors that they consider worthy of pitching on which we're so probably like 10 10 different directors maybe it depends on the commissioner so then you get 10 directors coming out with an idea and sending it in to the band and the label and then they pick one that they want to make right okay and the other directors who fail just don't go home don't get any money go home so you end up writing a lot of treatments a lot of them. okay right yeah so at that sort of level yeah and, and typically the director budget were, or the direct director fee was 10 percent of the budget right so if you're getting if you've got a 10 grand video say you're getting a thousand pounds and we're uh, sharing it right because there's two and of us which, well, which, so which we're <laughs> sharing for two weeks work right right <laughs> So, it doesn't matter because you we were 22 23 at the time so it's yeah and we were you know like, like loads of money we were in yeah. the music industry not being able to play any instruments <laughs> yeah, yeah. So was, but the thing is if you if you can um let's like, say you're doing uh animated video a lot of the rest of that budget will go to you though hmm. so were you able to do any animated videos then yeah, yeah, yeah. Most, in the early days most of them were animated okay cool and then we figured that it took too long uh and we decided not to do animated videos yeah we, we were also getting slightly bigger budgets as well weren't we like a year or two in yeah um, and we could do you know compression mixed, ideas media. mixed media mixed yeah. media is the term um but yeah, yeah. That, i mean that's how a music video is sort of pitched and won so you do you do come up with a lot of ideas that don't ever get made yeah and, then, and that's yeah. it's interesting yeah. and then when you see the final one that comes out you think oh our idea was so much better <laughs> no i was gonna say god that way that is better than ours <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah i wonder if it's still the same process now because there's obviously less money floating around and stuff whether there's actual commissioners and and that same process but certainly that was the case so we would just spend because as ed said you wanted to get you wanted to be on that list of directors yeah, that yeah. Sent the brief because once you're on that list you've got a chance right um and obviously the more you the more you win the more prominent you become and the more interested every other label and commissioner is because it's not a big industry it's not a big world there's only really like a, a sort of couple of handfuls worth of people in london or there were at the time um and they would obviously move from one label to the other and stuff and take you know take their contacts with them um so yeah just writing idea after idea after idea um it's a good way to cut your teeth in the sort of creative industries i suppose um yeah. yeah so when when you say you get a brief well sometimes that more specific than others in terms of like any ideas they already had sometimes uh, they came with um, ideas yeah sometimes a typical brief would be we want a performance video okay right um well they're quite a big thing at the time with this like yeah. strokes and stuff yeah. yeah yeah i mean most of the most of the videos from then are 
bands playing but with a twist you know right, in, a, yeah. in, a, in an interesting location or with an interesting with an interesting hook effect or technique or hook yeah. or something yeah um yeah some briefs were just the press release copy and pasted um and some briefs were oh, i've got i've got a bit of an idea can you build on it i remember um when we did that block party one um that the genesis of that came from uh what was the base is i think he was the basis he also did the sleeve artwork for the first couple of albums was it russell gordon gordon yes it was gordon yeah um he had a bit of an idea about some kind of tv playing in a in a room or something like that and, and it didn't quite make sense it didn't quite work and, and we sort of built on it and changed it enough to make it what we thought was going to be a great idea but also close enough to his to you know make make him happy and, and make sure that we got the gig basically um and didn't the rakes the the 22 grand job um was that yeah. entirely our well, idea well that that came a little bit from them didn't it yeah i mean we we'd done one before and we got on quite well with them and so they sort of came to us and said we we want to do this video in a i mean it's had to be in an office didn't it really i mean <laughs> like yeah yeah sort of a no-brainer to do that <laughs> um the girls weren't originally going to be in it okay they only got brought in like two days before right uh, were they dancers or yeah they were a group yeah. of dancers yeah D dance group yeah okay uh, i can't remember what they were called but they were they were a bit, quite a big thing in in sort of that era right right uh, and then yeah we were just going to do a performance video in the in an office basically that was it and then um somebody from the label knew one of the girls and was like well let's throw some extra money at it and uh and yeah we'll get you a group of girls and come up with a dance routine <laughs> so yes it was the weirdest uh collaboration of people come made that dance <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got like the choreographer from the dancers you got alan and then <laughs> yeah. us, and then the label and, and that's just what came out so <laughs> no, that's yeah. a great yeah. idea very little planning yeah you know, i was the only thing i i always think back is like god it's such a shame we didn't it was just before hd came around because all the mm. videos online are so bad quality yeah i was thinking that today like is it helicopter that you did for block party yeah, yeah, I mean that was that's meant to be like that, uh, but, okay. not, but not that bad. It's got like thirty-five yeah. million views, though. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, every few months I look at that and just to check what the view count is and ruin the fact that we don't get any royalties for the views. When we um, when we finished that video, it was getting um, like online um, at post house. That so means it just gets all the it gets checked for technical issues and stuff like that before it gets sent over to MTV. And they called us up and said, there's something wrong with your tape. It's broken. Yeah, this is yeah. broken. It was like, no, 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 no. It's meant to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, because wow. we were we upstairs doing that Manic Street Preachers video yeah. in that same yeah. post house. Yeah. Just basically burning through, <laughs> burning through Sony's money on a big budget job. Yeah, because I suppose at the time there wasn't YouTube, was there? So it was MTV was the end product. That was it, really? Mm, yeah. MTV, MTV too. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, there was a chart as well. Or the best videos or the best songs kind of thing? Uh, best videos, I think. All right, okay. That was your highlight of buying the enemy. Have we got any any anything in the uh, <laughs> best video chart? Yeah, yeah, because they've been an award for that every year, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever go to those awards? <laughs> yeah. The enemy ones, yeah. yeah. There's a, there was a music video one as well. Um, we were shortlisted for best director basically every year and we lost out to the same guy didn't we every year uh I, 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 google I, something or other he's a he's a commercials director now he does loads of big ads and stuff um but it was the same guy every year that beat us and like the other handful of shortlist directors uh yeah but the enemy awards were good fun yeah they looked yeah. it yeah was it yeah. just like i've heard it just turned into like one big indie night at the end or something yeah. yeah, and then everyone back to the Columbia. Okay, right. Yeah. That, that mad hotel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. we can't, yeah. I'm sure some of our other guests have mentioned the Columbia Hotel, maybe. 
Yeah, I think I've read about it in a few books as well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. You meet a lot of characters at, at events like that, though. Yeah, you do, but then... I can't remember. Uh, I don't know, memories turn into different memories, don't they? That <laughs> and you, I mean, you met people, but you didn't really... I, I mean, I never really ch- changed, swapped numbers with anyone. I was, you know, skanking around from dance floor to dance floor. <laughs> get out of there <laughs> do you ever like use it as a chat up line in a club like I actually did the video for this song uh, <laughs> I'm sure I did probably yeah <laughs> it's a decent yeah. one to be fair we because um, when after we did block party Kelly was just like the nicest dude alive um, and he 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 recognised us for a surprisingly long period of time after we'd shot that and so like years later we'd see him in a club and he'd, he'd be like oh hi how you doing yeah you good yeah you have a little chat and stuff and that was that was you know when they were getting like seriously big and, and that was um that was great because people would just be like, oh oh you know kelly you know kelly oh amazing ah so that was that was also fun and i think when um when we did that paul weller video he he just he didn't really deal with much of the label. He just did it all himself because he because he could, and he he doesn't you know doesn't really need to do a music video to promote himself or anything. So he we just switched numbers with him. So he would just phone us up on on our phone, and you you, you get the call, and you're in the pub with your friends. It just says it's coming from Paul Weller. Hold it up and show it to everyone before you take it out and take it. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots of moments like that. Uh, yeah. Yes. And how do you end up working with, with someone like Paul Weller? Is that through the label again? Yeah, he was on V2 with the, with, ah, okay. um, with the rakes. And... Right. Yeah, and wasn't, wasn't it, is it Jason Rackham, one of the yeah, Jason, yeah. guys yeah. from Sony, went to V2? So that's kind of how we got all of that business and all of work with all those artists. Um, yeah, we did yeah, a, a lot of stuff with V2. They're a good bunch there. Yeah. Okay. And we're like, what are the, what were some of the challenges of working with bands? Would you get some that were easy to work with others or was it more the label that was challenging? I think challenges were just winning pitches. Mm. Um, there's a few sort of ways you can do that. You can either come up with the best idea or you can try and make, make, fr- make friends with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, we used to go to a lot of gigs, uh, like loads, and you know, sidle up to them, say, "Oh, we're we're uh, we're, we're pitching on your video, so we've come to watch you." Uh, okay, right. And, you know, getting that way. Um, right. But yeah, just keep, just keep winning, keep because you're obviously coming up with bespoke ideas for every song you're doing. Mm. It's, it is hard, it's tiring, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, especially when you think you've got a, a you know surefire hit. And then yeah. it doesn't, it never materializes. Yeah, like where where do you get the inspiration? Was it like you said, going to watch the band or just listening to the song? Sometimes you'd you'd get an idea. Just listening to it mostly over, over and over. Yeah, yeah, I used to put put it on, uh, whatever Walkman or CD, whatever, and just walk around the park like until some kind of idea materializes. Just put it on a loop and just you're just going to walk for an hour round in circles until you've got an idea um but i think you know yeah we were writing fresh ideas like multiple times a week but that, that's not to say that there were oh that's a great idea or that's a great technique like we can we can repurpose that for the next one um and there was a few things i can't remember what but there was a few things that we just kept going with and kept going with until someone paid for it um but yeah we we and also you're kind of we were in vogue for a few years and then it was you know we had a really good hit rate it was quite easy to win stuff and then it kind of goes away for a bit it was, it was very difficult to kind of guess or or plan around any of that um yeah i can't really think of any sort of um, yeah with the, I mean, challenges or difficulties bands bands tend to be they were sort of quite excited on the day of the shoot um Depending on how any sort of experience they are. Yeah, like we worked with a lot of new bands, so for them to be on a video shoot was, you know, yeah, best time of their lives. 
So, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe by the fourth or fifth time they've done it, and they weren't so keen. But we were often working with, um, you know, freshly signed guys and girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When we did the Manics, they weren't exactly <laughs> lovely guys. Yeah, so they... The lovely guys, yeah. but they weren't. They didn't roll in. Um, you know, high fiving everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably like the twentieth yeah, video they've done or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Please, they've they've done a few. I think um, because they were on Sony, weren't they? So I think didn't they see uh, we made for hope in the states the red, the white, the black, the blue, um, which was like one of those like full on um like mixed media pieces. So the band were on a green screen, and we just put loads of like sort of roughly animated stock footage and stuff around them. Um, and apparently they were just like, that's the video we've been trying to make for a decade, like get these guys on board. I don't think we pitched on that, did we? No. We were no. basically invited to just remake that video with like triple the budget, um, which we tried to do. Um, and we promptly ran out of money long before we finished it. So we had to sort of spread out this kind of technique that we were trying to get the whole video to be this crazy 3D thing. And we just ran out of money. So it just kind of ended up being each chorus or something. Um, so yeah, it still it still turned out good. It was, but I remember it being quite stressful at the time because we we basically promised something that we weren't really able to deliver. Another example of having absolutely no clue about how much anything cost. Mm. Yeah. That, that wasn't our fault, though. No, nothing, was... <laughs> nothing's off. We yeah. <laughs> could, no, well, because the, the the first video we made, the Open States one, we made ourselves and then because we, we did it entirely we, ourselves yeah we we were encouraged to work with a bigger company who had more experience and better technically gifted animators yeah yeah they obviously charge a million times more money than us uh, we, okay so, we so is that what yeah, happens you have to team up sometimes yeah and at that oh yeah that, it was just yeah just because we we couldn't do the technical stuff that they wanted right right okay um yeah, they just had to fork out a bit more money. Yeah, yeah. Sony can afford it. Okay, so it'd be down to you for the ideas, but then you'd get other people on board to actually carry them out, kind of thing. Sometimes on that, get on that, on that yeah. larger one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, okay. And what's yeah. like? What's the most you spent on a video then? <laughs> that one. It'd be that one, wouldn't it? It's like hundred grand yeah. or something. Ninety oh, okay. grand, I think, just under. Well, I wasn't. Um, which is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's been twenty years, isn't it? It's all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a big song. That was a big hit, though, wasn't it? Oh, number two. Number oh no, not that. No, not that one. The uh, okay, right. Two preachers one was. Ah, uh, sorry, one. right. Yeah, God no. Hope the states never got a hundred grand. No. Uh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. And uh, how how long would these things take as well? On average, like a say like a like twenty two grand job. How long did that take to film? Just one day. So one yeah. day shoot with a with like whatever a week of prep leading up to it, and then uh, the post production is anything between a few days and a, and a few weeks, depending on how complex the post is. So that Manix that Manix Street Preachers one was really complex in terms of post production. So that took weeks, and that's kind of where we just burned through the money. But something like the rakes, that twenty two grand job, it's just a simple edit. Mm. So I think it was like a two day edit or something. Um, and it, you know, something like that just cuts itself. Really, you just choose all the best takes, and you just slap them down on the timeline, and yeah. you're basically left with an awesome video. Yeah, yeah. And we'll ask, ask us what the cheapest video we ever made was. What was the cheapest video we ever made? Have a, have a guess. Have a guess. Um, of the artists we just talked about, the Rex. No, um, you've had him on your pod. The Rex, no? No. Right, uh, Adam on the pod. Should have a look. Made some notes here. <laughs> Les Inc. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> was that literally just like someone's house or something? That or was downstairs in... Um... The Met... No, not Metro Club. No. Madam Jojo? Oh, I can't remember. It was either Madam Jojo's or... I think it was Madam Jojo's or... Patty Bogle, is that an old club? I can't remember. Um, I think it's Madame Jojo's. But yeah, yeah, it's just... I don't know. I don't think it's Madame Jojo's. That's just a... 
Yeah, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, so we met. For, I met Fred through going to White Heat and that crowd. And uh, Fred, we were got talking, and he said he want. He, do you know what the, the brief for that was? I want it to look like a you've been framed birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth does that mean <laughs> right. i don't know we, i think we got pretty close yeah yeah it's got, the, uh, <laughs> it's got that vibe i guess yeah so what was it just like i mean you said it was a bit of a who's who of the london scene is that how yeah, you described it, was. it yeah yeah uh well matt is in it from white heat uh i can't remember the two girls the djs who used to dj together uh, queens of noise no yeah. no those guys oh. it was, um Oh, they used to DJ at Frog, I think. Uh, I can't remember the names. Well, is it Laura now? Not Laura Marsh. I don't know, maybe. Oh, there, possibly. Uh, and then, um, who else is in it? You've got... Is it is Steve, Steve like... Wright's son? He was a bit of a character, wasn't he? Whose son? Steve Wright, the DJ from Radio 2. Apparently his son was a bit of a... Tom Wright, is it? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. <laughs> I might have known him, but I might not have known him to be Steve Wright's son. Okay, he used to carry a cane around and stuff, I think. Has he got the sword in the video? Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to watch it again. And I think it's Fred's cousins in it, the actor who's in the in-betweeners. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's the lead. <laughs> right. It's his birthday. Oh, uh, yes. And then, because um, Matty plays the clown in it too. <laughs> well, it was actually quite a lot of fun to do then at the time that was a good fun day yeah 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 but i mean yeah it was a cheap i think we did it for like 150 quid you know <laughs> lifetime <laughs> free entry to white heat yeah 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 so you, you get to keep the rest of the budget then basically <laughs> well they're 10 percent of it <laughs> yeah 10 percent of yeah God, I, don't, I think the money went on jelly and um sweets <laughs> Um, and then you talk about ideas like what are the best ones that never made it then or what well maybe start with the best one that made it I still think the one we did for um, Sing It Out Hope of the States was a lot of fun um, yeah we electrocuted we... the band you electrocuted them yeah we yeah. went up to um you know those exercise pads that you can put on your stomach? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, the turning we, things. We had them rewired uh, and placed them on limbs. One on each limb, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, were, they were wired up and the wires came off camera. We were basically puppeteering them off camera. <laughs> so, well, so you could pick which one went off? Yeah. Yeah, you could just take legs. their yeah. spasming <laughs> while they were playing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> God, we wrote a lot that never got made. We did a Kylie treatment once. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Which song was that? <laughs> it wasn't a big hit, I'll say that. Uh, okay. And didn't we turn down Arctic Monkeys? What? I don't know. I don't, I mean, we, I, I don't I, remember I, that. I think we got offered the right on the first one, Dance Floor looking good on we're just like <laughs> nah this bad shit That's no way i don't yeah. think i would i wouldn't have said that i was all over the arctic monkeys when they were no no it's before they were it was like no one had ever heard of them it was this you know their debut single and oh they, they they got a bit of hype around them and we we used to to your earlier point we we'd get so many bands that had a bit of hype around them because they were brand new and I think we were just a little bit jaded at that point because it was sort of the back end of, I feel like it was the back end of our career. Um, and I'm sure that we just, nah, I haven't got time to do this one. Sorry, not interested. Or maybe we did and we just didn't put much effort into it and it, we obviously didn't win it. Um, quite, just, you could be sparking off a big uh, argument here. But... <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Uh, yeah, I, I'd never, I didn't think we ever got an Arctic Monkey song. I was... I was a big early early adopter. I was on oh, the. Okay. I was maybe I just the... didn't tell you about it. I just I did. I maybe made the decision before I it. even asked you. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I was on the message board. You know, da- sending all the uh, downloading demos through Netscape, whatever it was. <laughs> MySpace. 
Maybe MySpace, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that was the one where they wanted it to be like the old grey whistle test, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good video. They did yeah, it yeah. yeah. Really. That is good, yeah. Yeah, banging. <laughs> and was there any directors that you admired that, that, that did similar? I mean, like people like Michael Gondry stand out, I guess, with the white stripes. Yeah, and we, people were the like best. we were the best. <laughs> Fair um, play. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that when that Gondry video for uh, Hardest Button to Button came out, put me in a real funk. That did when I saw that. Why? Because I, I remember thinking, Christ, I'm never going to do anything anywhere near as good as that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember, I remember telling that to um, Jason from VT. And he, I could see the disappointment in his face. <laughs> you had a can-do attitude. Yeah. I feel like I'd let him down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that even got Gosh. emulated in The Simpsons once, didn't it? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he was good. And um, I used to like, well, I still like... Shinola. Shinola. They were great. Um, then you had uh, this, this guy's... Uh, what are they called? Dazed and Confused? Is that? No. Uh, what are they called? No, Hammer and Tongs, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hammer and Tongs, which were, were great. Um, they went on to do, like, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, didn't they? Yeah, and and Sing. Yeah. Sing and Sing too. Those, so, you know, pretty good, pretty successful. Mm. Um, oh, there's loads. I mean, like you said, Dougal was amazing. Dougal, that's it. Yeah, he was very good. He was always a step ahead of us as well, wasn't he? Um, Did he go on well with these people, though? Was there a bit of a community of directors or not, really? Yeah, there was, yeah, yeah. Um, But every it sort of... There was obviously rivalry. Yeah. Because you're all pitching on the same stuff. Um, Especially if you had the sort of similar type of style. Because you get a lot of directors have... You know, very cinematic stuff where you get like grungy animators and but yeah there was a good it was a good night out at the end of the year when the as a you know the video awards yeah yeah and you mentioned was there a story that you mentioned in the enemy on the uh the cool list or something oh yeah we were in the cool list yeah 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 i was trying to find i, I, I thought i might have that um copy but i don't have it so what was the story with that we we were in it. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you like placed like, in the cool list? No, they had a was, list. Uh, if they if if they walked, they would be non musicians. We were in between Simon Pegg and Thierry Henry, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. good company. Oh, nice I one. Say, like, uh, who were you? You spoke to the enemy. Is it Connor? Yeah, about the cool list. Yeah. And he, you know, that it's, it's all, you know, it's all made up, and you know, who. Uh, so I can pretty much guarantee uh, the hope of the states um, PR uh, person made a call to, to ask us to be in it, <laughs> <laughs> just, just as a favour. Yeah, oh, nice we one. were quite cool though, so I think we. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that'll be good for the kids in the future. Yeah, you've yeah. still got a copy, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the vault. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned royalties. Like, do some directors get royalties on the videos? How does that work? Nah, you think, sign um, it back to the start and you sign your life away for your budget. Right, right again. Yeah. It's a shame, though. Would have liked a penny of you on Block Party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I posted that. Uh, I posted a video of them playing that live on Twitter, and it just blew up for some reason. Yeah, it was a. It was on. Great um, song. It was yeah, on yeah, it's for one year, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I think that was why. Yeah, yeah. And I also think it might have been on um, a racing game as well. Yeah, I think it was on what else? Oh, it's on um, Guitar Hero, I think, as well. Apparently. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it took that's, off. That's the one video people ever ask. Oh, what did you do? You know, I used to be a music video. That's so any any that I've seen, and that was the one. That was always the one because you could list off all the Hope of the States, the Rakes, the Manics, and you know, most people heard of all those artists. But 
some some of them they'd seen, some of them they hadn't, but Block Party Helicopter is always the one. Oh, wow, you did that. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. And was it a good way of getting free tickets for gigs then? Because you get to a lot of good gigs, obviously. Yeah, great. Yeah. Did you get yeah. to go to the after show as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was it, yes. And that's just the right time, like 2003 onwards type thing. Yep. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> what, what, what are some of the best gigs you went to? If you can think of any. Uh, I went to a like a secret Kasabian gig, which was amazing. Um, where was that? At the Barfly. Ah, okay. And there was loads of it was. I, I'm not sure what it was for, but we were. I was there to see him and like pitch on a a video, I think. But there were a lot of faces there, all mm. down the front. There was no. It was a pro- I felt I felt like it was a secret like industry gig. Um, but it was amazing. Yeah. Um hmm, don't know really. Um like, who were your favorite bands from that time, really? Without offending anyone. I mean, I like the rakes. Yeah, yeah. The rakes are, yeah. Um uh yeah block party i was a big stripes and white stripes guy libertines yeah the strokes white stripes especially the white stripes i was quite into godspeed and silver mount zion all those guys I kind of got into that through hope of the states um but yeah block party up there the rakes i, I listened to that rakes album just a few months ago and it's still really good um, oh, it's brilliant, yeah. And likewise, the Art Brute one as well. Yeah. Um, the one that we did, the first one, um, the sleeve, the art, artwork. Um, yeah, they, you know, completely stand the test of time, for sure. And are there any bands that you wish you'd worked with or you came close to but it didn't happen for some reason, apart from Arctic Monkeys? Yeah, well, that's contentious, isn't it? <laughs> I, yeah, I think I might, I might be misremembering that. Um, um... I can tell you who the band are that we wrote the most treatments for. Oh, yeah. Maximo Park. Okay. I think we must have written seven. Oh, we did a few, different... didn't we? Yeah. How, and how big, a tre- how big is the treatment kind of thing? Is it like... Two, maybe, I don't know, 1,000 words, 500 words. Right. It's but it's more like the time it? that goes into the idea. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to set, do visuals for it as well. Oh, wow. Send some references. It's a lot harder. It was a lot harder to visualize your sort of idea back then. Mm. Like you could, you could AI it now. Yeah, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Um, it was the it was equipment before, all like, primitive and stuff. Search. Well, it was just wasn't e- like if your thing is if you're trying to come up with an idea that's never been done, there's never any imagery that you can show off. Yeah. So it was really hard to get your idea across. A lot. So of you the have time. to. You have to show. Oh, imagine this, but in that color in that situation and mix those two to you know it was um yeah it was before image search it was before a lot of that stuff so yeah it was just writing something that was compelling that made sense that sense checked that that you could afford it and do it in the time that we had and and that you you know you have to kind of reference the brief sometimes just to make sure that yeah yeah we've answered your brief and we've done that thing that you asked us to do and yeah, it was quite a few hours went into, you know, it was a day or three, depending on how much effort you put into it. Yeah. Did you ever just go for some because you knew the budget would be massive? So you just thought it'd be a good laugh. <laughs> well, the Kylie one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah to be, our budgets sort of weren't huge. You know, the, the, the big budget stuff goes to pop, you know. Um, mm. Yeah. Normal MTV. MTV2 back then was the um you know the dirty little brother <laughs> yeah does that like i don't know do you sometimes get the best ideas when you're on a budget though do you think do you think it becomes a bit mad when you've got this huge budget yeah yeah it does yeah because you get money gets wasted when you've got a lot of it yeah yeah you get the kind of spinal sap ideas coming out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and you mentioned the quality of some of the videos do you think there's 
any chance like better versions of the videos could come out at some point? I guess if someone just recorded them off on VHS, they'd look a bit better than the YouTube ones at the minute. I, I have That's no idea exist. where the masters were. The okay. masters have probably all been put in a bonfire somewhere. MTV um, have probably still got masters, but possibly. Mm. Um, but no one. I don't got... know how many like Betamax tapes they would have. Mm. I mean, the physical space involved in that for every music video. Um... I've probably still got masters of the ones we actually edited, but that block party one, the pro the, the Adobe Premiere project, uh, corrupted, and I was lucky. I just had a play out that I could use, and rather than have to read got... the whole thing. I've actually got a much better quality Block Party one and the Rakes one on on my Vimeo page. Oh, uh, really? But, okay. And I'm sure you have as well, Ed, because do you remember like a few years ago, the labels came, certainly came after me and said, you've got to take that down. You can't really? have, because yeah. I had like Hope of the States, I'd Red, White, Black, the Blue, Sing It Out, um, the Rakes, uh, Block Party. And yeah, they just cease and desist because they're losing out advertising money on youtube right yeah um, because yeah. you don't have any rights to it even though you directed it and even though you wrote the idea um so yeah they're they're hidden so they okay, do exist right. actually they're just behind the password on my vimeo page right <laughs> <laughs> collecting digital dust no one's going to see them because you can't you can't publish them yeah that's a shit a minute yeah so i guess obvious question is like what you both went on to do after that then what happened kind of thing well, Michelle Gondry made that White Stripes video and I retired. I I got fed up of losing pitches and just decided I wasn't going to do it anymore. And I went to work uh, 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 to get a proper job. So, well, properish. I went to work for a TV production company doing graphics for documentaries. Ah, cool. And uh, I did that for know, seven years or so. Then I went freelance about six years ago. Right. Um, and that's what I'm doing now. Work, yes. Work. Yeah, I think we, because um, it was just the two of us, so we were trying to run a business. We were both, you know, supposedly creative. Neither of us had any clue how to run a business. And I think we we reached a point where to grow we'd have to employ other people that actually knew what they were doing and we could just carry on you know trying to get into tv directing or more commercial oriented stuff whatever and we just never really got our act together and did that so i think ed sort of saw that coming a bit sooner than i did um so yeah ed, ed went and got that job and i i carried on but in in sort of a freelance capacity for a few years but just under that same name um this is all right for a few years and then what do music videos few, still i did a few um but then we did a lot of work for top man um which is all something right. that ed and i started out so ed you we did like two or three of them didn't we before you yeah got, yeah so well, top man came to us thing. yeah i mean there's a few things the main one was just doing doing like their in-store um they send a DVD out to all of their stores every six months saying, this is how you promote this year's or this season's collection. And the reason they came to us is because they wanted it just to all look very indie. Um, and we were, you know, yeah, well, we did before part of that scene, making, making that, defining yeah. that look. Yeah. Cause the to top man had a big, like you know, the fashion, the top man was selling a lot of stuff to like, MTV. Yeah, everyone was wearing top man clothes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then they, they started doing, putting bands on. Um, and they actually had t like a show. They had a TV show once, I think, um, which we ended up doing graphics for. And then I think then they came to us to do some more boring, but better paid corporate stuff. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, because didn't we, we were doing some, we did a video for a band called Air Traffic. And then they came back for another one. And they kept sort of moving the dates around. And then we got to a point that we had some top man work that was paying like orders of magnitude more than the video budget. 
well, the, then the director's fee from the budget. And I think we just said, no, we're going to do this instead because you, you know, you've been dicking us about with scheduling for weeks and we're still not committed. These guys are ready to start and we haven't got time or space to do both. And that must have really annoyed someone at BMG because we didn't get a lot of work after that. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just evaporated, didn't it? Um, so yeah, so I lived off got his proper job i lived off top man and a handful of like little tiny music videos for some years um and then i got a proper job about 10 years ago um work in the ad industry now doing like the making ads selling selling shit to people who don't need it <laughs> that's like that's that's the pinnacle you start as a music video director you just go downhill downhill and you just make tv ads and social ads and stuff now so yeah, well, at least you've properly used your degree, which not a lot of people can say. Yeah, yeah I, just, I was thinking. I was thinking earlier. At least we're still doing it. Yeah, that's mm. very true. Right, because yeah. a lot of people in those bands, I bet they're not in music anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been an interesting thing about doing the podcast is like seeing what people are doing now, type thing. Yeah, it's been been great listening in to some of that stuff actually. Lasse, Lasse from the Rakes is a chef, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got him into it really because in one of the videos i think it's um all too human oh yeah he plays a chef <laughs> <All right. video. laughs> and i reckon that's where it all came from <laughs> <laughs> yes i think it's a, a restaurant in south london he's got might have to go in some point yeah well yeah, if he cool. ever watches this he'll remember that dressing up as a chef <laughs> And then I always like to ask people, is there anything they do like the high what was the high point and is there anything that you do differently about those naughty days? I remember um I'll never forget this. Standing with Ed at five o'clock in the morning or thereabouts in a in a wet field, drinking terrible coffee out of a styrofoam cup in the cold, waiting for the sunrise. We were about to start shooting a video. I can't remember who it's for. And we were just like, music video directing is not glamorous, is it? Fucking <laughs> shit. Look at what, look at this. It's like cold, wet, dark. We've been up since God knows when. That was, that's the highlight. Cause that's when you know you've made it. <laughs> mm. uh, I quite I think the tours. Tours with Hope of the State, surely. Yeah. Like two weeks with all your best mates in a in a bus, just like living that kind of student dream of like, this is a we're on a tour bus. We're going to all the uni like towns around the UK and we're getting paid to just get drunk every night with our best mates and hang out afterwards. And all we have to do, because we've done all the work in advance, is turn up there and press play on the on the like the, the screens behind. Mm. Right, yeah. That okay. was good. Uh, we we we, um, we curated a night at the uh, Le uh, Leeds Festival in the um, thingy tent in the cabaret tent once. Oh yeah. So you we know, DJ, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We 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 were invited to do basically decide what happened in the tent on the Saturday night. All oh, right, okay. Um, through the, um. This guy called Phil, who runs some uh, short film stuff. Anyway, he was in charge of it. Uh, that was good fun because we got to put on a couple of bands and uh, DJ, which was good. Yeah, we DJed we at a festival. DJ at a festival. That my wife still doesn't believe that happened, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I just made a mix CD and just played it and pretended. <laughs> <laughs> i mixed i mixed mine in final cut pro because that's all i had, knew how to use yeah and just yeah press play um, uh, and, then make his drink, you? and then yeah. i think when we finished at like at 11 we like they put the cinema screen on in the tent and they just showed all our videos that's it that yes. was cool yeah that, that was, was cool good, yeah what yeah. year was and that out of interest do you can you remember uh probably about 2005 or six i was gonna say five or six yeah yeah it's probably there at least actually we did um it was the year harma superstar was there okay 
So I remember him bumping into him backstage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we didn't. We obviously didn't get paid for that, but we did get like twenty something tickets. So right, we, right. You know, all of our mates were there, which was great. Um, and we did we did a similar smaller thing with Phil as well, didn't we? At the ICA. Yeah, we DJ'd was... there and we had a bit of a retrospective of our work and a bit of a Q&A in one of the cinema rooms. Mm. We DJ'd there on cassette tapes. That was a fucking disaster, wasn't wow. it? Do you remember? Trendy. Before yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Just like trying to rewind and find the one that, oh, no, you're, really, but you're going forward on the other side. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, that's nice. And then I guess that moment when your video gets an MTV, that must be a big moment, really. It was always quite cool to see that. Yeah. yeah, it was, especially in the early days. The first one, yeah. Was... Yeah, I mean, my, my, when my like uni project was on MTV and, you know, getting banned from MTV and <laughs> pretty insane. Yeah, and, and I mean, every it, time I did a... Go it on. was weird because it was like a seven-minute animated, like, post-rock thing as well. So it wasn't a typical video, which was sort of even weirder. Yeah, and every time we did a record sleeve, like seeing a shelf full of them in HMV or Rough Trade, always always got a bit of a buzz from that. I remember going into Rough Trade and chatting to the guy, the original one in, in West London, chatting to the guy behind the counter. And I think Black Dollar Bills, the first Hope of the State single, was playing at the time. And I, and I think I was trying to be clever. I was like, "Oh yeah, this is good. Who's this?" And he and he told me, and he and he told me about the sleeve artwork. He said, "Oh, you should you should see the sleeve artwork. It's you know, it's all handmade. It's like got handwritten stuff on it. It's all hand stitched." And what I should have done is been like, oh. but I um, I just went, "Yeah, yeah, I know, I did it." <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I'm like still embarrassed about. But um, after you'd asked him what song it was. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> no, no, it's a really cool scene. oh no i did it i did it yeah <laughs> did you have yeah did you have a no. favorite sleeve that you did probably the um the red the white the black the blue was quite good because it had this oh it's difficult to describe but we did some die cut stuff so that when you opened it out like the, the layer underneath changed color and stuff um oh, okay the, the promo, the sort of limited promo that was sent to radio and stuff was all handmade, sort of etched and burned flags and stuff. So we did, we had a bit of budget with Hope of the States, actually. Um, we did some quite interesting stuff with weird, interesting paper stock, weird, interesting shapes. We didn't, we very rarely used the, the usual jewel, like the, you know, the plastic CD case, had everything made bespoke. And I was kind of really into the idea of, it's sealed. You have to physically destroy it to get the record out um, so to stop people like, you know, keeping it pristine or, or actually trying to make people buy two. So you kept your pristine one and then you destroy the other ones, get the record out. Um, so, yeah, I think the, the red, the white was. I like the one, one, the one where it was the heat reactive sleeve where you had to. Yeah. No, put your hand on this thing and you could see the image behind it. All right. So it just looked like a black cover until you put your hand on it and then the image came through yes yeah, like global hypercolor t-shirts but on a on a sleeve mm. it just revealed the image underneath yeah was yeah. that similar then where you get would you get a budget for for sleeves as well yeah you didn't normally you just you wouldn't get like a set budget like you did for music videos um you come up with an idea and you go in and you basically try and persuade them to spend a bit more money or or to You'd always have to do, you'd always have to do the sort of plastic jewel case version because that's the one, you know, after the first batch, that's the one that gets made and that's, you know, forever more. But you can usually do a batch of however many thousand with some interesting paper or some interesting ink or, or something like that. Um, and I remember the, the George Michael's comeback album, the one when he's like sat on that white sofa that made Sony so much money that they were pretty flush at the time. That allowed us to like go crazy with the first Hope of the States album with all sorts of like bespoke packaging and templates and card and like we've made all these books and everything that were hand stitched and there's no way that would ever have happened if it wasn't for Sony being so flush with cash after George Michael's like supremely successful comeback album 
I mean, we were told outright, like, well, the only reason we can afford this is because of that record. So just really good timing because it, it allowed us to, you know, like that first music video, one of the first projects out of college was to design like a the, the album artwork for like two or three different versions for the CD, like the special version, the normal version, and the sort of in-between version, and the 12 inch, all the promo stuff. So it's like a whole suite of artwork you know, with, across different shapes and sizes. And as with the music videos, I had obviously no idea what, what we were doing. Um, but we just got given quite a lot of leniency um, because they were, yeah, they had a bit of money at the time. I also think the label were quite happy that they'd signed a band that just came packaged with us two. So they didn't mm. have to worry or think about any music videos, any artwork, you know, bands were just starting to build actual websites at the time. And so we did all the art direction and the sort of storytelling for what their site was going to be. Didn't know how to build it. Someone else did the build. Um, so, yeah, they, I think the label were pretty happy just to let us get on with it. Um, and that's partly why Howard was so keen to sign to a big label um, next to the, you know, the most senior A&R guy you could get, because then you do get that leniency and you do get that freedom. Um which was fucking awesome. Like, as I say, it's it's kind of quite amazing to think about it, how much freedom we got when we were fresh out of university and clearly, clearly had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's coming back to me a bit about Howard and what Ryan was saying. So I think he described him as like a whirlwind or something. Was he a bit of a character? Yeah. Love him. I, even, I miss Howard. I, know where to start. <laughs> I, wish, I wish Howard was still in my life. Yeah, he's a, he was a legend. Yeah, fair play. I don't even know where to begin. And he sort of dropped off the radar, didn't he? He's like just disappeared. Um, I think last I heard he's in Spain or something. But he was one of those people that was so, so anti mobile phones and email, because obviously email was like pretty new at the time. And he just he wasn't interested in any of that. So he, when he did want to just disappear, he properly did. Um, <laughs> I hope he's all right, wherever he is uh but yeah he was a whirlwind of chaos and fun um yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was awesome i miss him yes and do you reckon you can agree on a song to play out to maybe from one of your videos <laughs> i can just pick one maybe um god oh, it's got to be Oh, he can't be 20 good. Well, what about uh, <laughs> Little Man Tate? <laughs> Which song was that? I can look at your list. Um, oh, we did about... a couple, didn't we? Milburn. Milburn, yeah. That was quite a big song, wasn't it? What You Could Have Won. All to the Floor or something, wasn't it? Or what was the... What You Could Have Won? What You Could Have Won, yeah. Yeah. Uh... yeah. No, Les Inc. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> I still listen yeah. to that song. That comes up on playlists. I love it, that track. That's yeah, a good song, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a real lot it stood the test of time, that one. Yeah, there's a good video of them. Um, someone's put it on YouTube of them playing some TV show or something. TV show? Yeah, someone's mm. like rescued it from Channel 4 or something. It's not it's the Tottenham fun. TV show, is it? Oh, let's have a look. I'll Google it now. <laughs> uh, I think I'm from I think it might. I don't know if it actually made. It's on a show called Whatever. Apparently. So yeah, there we go. Take your word for it. 